So once you've logged in, it looks like this, minus a few of the little features that I've got already entered into this database. Up in the right hand corner, we've got account. This is quite important to go and make sure that everything's fine before you start. In settings, we have the number of inventory items per page, stock items, projects, sales, diary, and you can change these whenever you want. If you charge a sales tax and you're going to use the point of sales system that's built into my work projects, then this is uh, optional. For example, like a GST, maybe 10% or something like that. Your currency, um, there's a whole heap of different currencies in here. I've added pretty much every one in the world. The sales name and then my email. You can also request a copy of the invoice and I'll get to that in a few minutes. Uh, this is the top of the invoice and this is the bottom of the invoice. You can put a little message in there saying thank you for your business and also you can upload a JPEG image. So once you've done those you can press update settings. In your membership it will look similar to this but when you sign up initially it will give you an option to pay by Etsy or payhere.co. Okay so let's get on to the actual features of the site. In the left menu here, we have inventory, stock, categories, suppliers, projects, sales, customers, your diary. And there's also options to export data, links and support messages and some stats and help. At the top, we have calendar, to-do list, your gallery and links. I'll go straight into the inventory. Here we have some inventory items that I've already set up. When you log in initially, there'll be nothing in here. I'll just go and add one item so you can see what it looks like. So I'm actually going to add one and we're going to say test coconut oil. I'll put it into oils. This is the date today. And this oil cost me $10. It's in grams. And when I purchased it, it was 750 grams. Now, the cost per volume is really important if you're going to use the project. So the cost per volume is $10 divided by 750 grams. So we're going to leave that blank. My supplier is Coles. You can type in a new supplier if you want. You can also type in the supplier's link and some more information. Now, because we've left this cost per volume blank, it will automatically figure it out. So I'm going to add this item. Okay, so it's already worked out that that 0.013 is the cost per volume for this item. Once we've added it, we can go back and change, and I've got 10 kilograms of it. As long as there is a number there, it won't change, but if you leave it blank, it will. I know it seems confusing, and I do suggest that people have a little play around, add some items, see what happens, and then once you get the hang of it, then you can add all your inventory. Uh, at the bottom here, we have a copy this item. So if you have items that are very similar, maybe similar in price, you can simply press this button, and what it will do is it will make a quick copy of that inventory item, but it will also add copy in the name, so you'll know it is a copy. So in volumes, we have a whole heap of set volumes, which are these ones down here, but you can add your own volume that you want and you can have as many as you want. Okay, so the same sort of thing goes for stock items. Um, it's very similar to inventory. This is the ad page, name, SKU, batch number, the stock category. You can add another category if you want, just like you could in inventory. But the categories for inventory and stock are completely different. Uh, and projects also have their own category as well. We also have the date added and the finish date, the quantity and a warning quantity. So you could set this for, say, uh, 50. And if it goes under 50, then it becomes a red stock item. And you can see that up in the top right hand corner here. It says low stock and it will display one. If you click on that, it will display all the low stock items. The next option is price, then weight, then more information. Inventory categories, stock categories, and project categories. 
These are the same that you can add manually or use a drop down. List suppliers, these are very helpful when trying to find who you bought the item from. If I click on Audi, you can see there's name, phone number, email, website, address, and information. You can also copy this and add it to the diary along with delete. And there is also a print button at the top. I'll go down to list customers. It's very much the same as suppliers. If you enter a customer, you can check this box to say you can email them their invoice once you do an invoice with their customer ID and a lot of the other details. The same as before, add it to the diary, copy this customer and delete. Related links at the bottom, I've added this person in for a sale. So the sale will turn up here and also in diary. So these are quick links to get to that sale or that diary for that particular person. The diary area, you have a, a number of different options here. You can type in a title, the date, the time, your text goes here. So you can select the project that you want to write the diary about, a stock item, inventory item, a supplier, an invoice, or a customer. So I'll quickly show you the calendar. This is it, it's very simple. You've got all the months of the year. If I click on January, you can see that I've got a few items that I've entered and a few sales as well. So I've got one sale on the third, one on the seventh, and down further, I've got 44 inventory items. So you can simply click on these items and they will display. And it's a really easy and quick way to get to that particular item that happened on that day. So this is the sales section. Um, at the top here, you've got five invoices. Okay, so I'm going to add an invoice for this day. And I've got four items. So I'm going to add some Love Spell and some Black Raspberry Vanilla. And I'm going to add two of each one. And as you can see over here, it's got black raspberry vanilla, two is the quantity, $5.50 each, and the total is $11 for both of them. At the top here, I've got my invoice number. So here we have customers. Now we can use the drop down box to select the customer, or we can add a new customer here. You can also check this box to invoice the person once you've completed. So I'm going to choose Roger, and we will now see up in the corner here that that is his email address. Once we complete the invoice, an email will be sent to him with the invoice. So down here, we've got number of items for, you can add a discount if you want to. So there is an amount, a percentage or an amount. So if you wanted to say 10% off, it is taken $2.20 off that amount. And these are things where your tax will turn up if you've entered it correctly and also your change if you're taking cash. Now this is a great system if you're at a market and you're taking cash and it's $22 and they might have given you $30 in cash and the change is $8. Now from that, if they were taking Visa, you press Visa and there is no change given. You can also write a note. Dean was here, press update. And then that note appears below. That is your private notes. They don't exist on the invoice. Also at the top here, we've got an option. So if you made a mistake, you can just say, I want to confirm to clear this. And once you do, all these items will be put back into the stock. So nothing is just discarded. It's put back into your database. Okay, so we're ready to do an invoice. And we're going to press pay. So that invoice has been completed. As you can see, the sale has been completed on this day. And that's pretty much it for the sales section, other than the cash flow at the top here. So if I press cash flow, I've made a couple of examples. For this particular year, 2021, I've got $1,425.50 for January. Now over here on the right hand side, it's got number of invoices, six. And you can see that it's only six in total at the moment. If I press details, it will show me all the days and all the invoices that I've got, and then the grand total for that month. Okay, so also at the top here, you've got a to-do list. This is a very simple but basic system, most likely like you get on an app. So if I wanna add some to-do lists, um, more coding, 
and I want to choose orange, I can add it and more coding will turn up. And if I've completed it, I can just click it and it will ghost. And once you've, you're happy that you've completed it, you can delete those tasks. It will ask you to confirm and you can confirm it and it will disappear. You can also add multiple ones at a time. So I'm just going to type in a few and I'm going to say they're purple. And now I've got all my tasks. So the gallery at the top is a page that will display all your inventory, stock, diary and project photos. So this is not photo gallery where you can just throw a random photo. They are attached to inventory items, stock items, your diary and your project. Okay, so let's go into projects. This is where the magic happens. So I'm going to add a project for this and I'm going to call it Love Spell CP Soap. Um, you can enter a batch number. I'm going to choose the category that I've already got set up, which is CP Soap. You can add a description um, for your own personal information, the date. And for this one, I'm going to have 30 bars of soap that are going to be produced from this project. The stock item is quite important. If you check this box, then it will create a new stock item from scratch. Otherwise, you can use one of the drop downs that you've already created. I would create a new stock item and that will create this stock item. Okay, so now that we're in our project, we can go back into edit and edit any of the details that we need to. You can also add a photo down here. In summary, this is basically where everything happens. So we can use this drop down menu to select inventory items that we want to add to the project. So basically it goes inventory item into a project, create a stock item. So for this one, I'm going to add something simple, olive oil. Now I can add these one at a time or I can click this multiple inventory. So I get a full list of the ones that I want to add. So I'm going to select those ones, some water, because I'm making cold process, caustic soda, and that, and press add select. Now it adds all those inventory items at a quantity of one. For this particular one, I might have 1,600 grams of that, 200 grams of that, caustic soda was 560, castor oil was 200, Coconut oil was 900 and the rice bran was, and then the water was 1000. So we're just going to click on update project. You can see that it's going to cost us $41.64 to make this project. Uh, at the bottom here, because I entered 30, it's only going to cost $1.39. And these are somewhat made up figures just to give you an idea. At the top here, we have the ability to double half one third or one fourth the recipe. So in expenses, we've got all the details that we've added along with the ingredients and the total cost. So $41.64, it's going to cost $1.39 per bar to make. The stock price is not set yet because we have created a new item. So let's just go back into Love Spell CP Soap. This is the stock item that we've created on the fly. So as you can see, we've got no quantity, but I like to sell my bars at $5.50. So I'm going to enter $5.50 and press update. And then I'm going to close that window. I'm going to come back here and you can see that the stock price is $5.50. That means my profit is now $4.11 and the total profit is $123.30. Now at the bottom here, I have all the inventory item names. So I can simply copy that and paste it into a website or other. Uh, at the bottom here, there is a print page, which is identical to this, but without the My Work Projects details and menu. So let's go and make this project. So by clicking on Make Project, what it's going to do is going to take 1600 grams from olive oil and then add the total 30 bars to the stock. So it basically keeps all your inventory up to date. So let's press make project. Okay, so that's made the project. Now if I go into history, 
you'll see that on this date at this time, I made this project. Now, if you press delete, all that inventory item will be put back into stock and the stock items will be removed. So it basically reverses the process that you've actually just done. So I'm going to do that. Press delete. I'm going to confirm it. And now I have never made that recipe before and all the inventory is back in stock. It does seem a little confusing at first. I'm going to go into extreme details with this and I'm going to have each section having its own video so you'll know exactly what to do. So there we have it. That's pretty much about it. The system allows you to keep inventory, stock, your recipes, your projects, your sales, your customers, your suppliers, and a diary entry so you can keep your business flowing and up to date. And also keep in mind that this system does not talk to third-party software. So it won't talk to Google, it won't talk to Etsy, it won't talk to any merchant accounts. All the information in here is for your eyes only. So I can't even see your information, only you can. So keep that in mind that the data is only for you. So if you have any questions, please leave a, a comment in the video and I'll do my best to help you as much as I possibly can. I'm open to suggestions and feedback. I want to make this system really powerful so you guys can run your small businesses from home without any problems at all. Thanks very much for watching and have a great day.